today on the program, we just heard from John Gambrell in Jerusalem there, break down for us the, the risk and, and what's happening on the ground, where these strikes are, are, are headed towards. We've got Syria, the West Bank, Lebanon now. What does this mean or say about Israel in terms of where it's taking this conflict and how dangerous is this? I think uh, the, the uh, best one can say about both uh, the Israeli government and the Biden administration here in Washington is that they're groping around for a policy. Uh, Israel is going back to old practice routines of uh, trying to solve this problem by force, and it keeps coming back. For the Biden administration, uh, there has been zero uh, movement on a diplomatic solution. There has been no Middle East peace process, what used to be known here as the MEPP. You have to go back to Bill Clinton years in the 90s. The last serious effort was in 1998. Since then, Obama did not have a serious uh, peace initiative. Uh, Trump certainly did not. And now Biden, uh, zero effort. Mm. So uh, the background is that we've seen this violence before, not just between Israel and, and the Palestinians in Gaza, but uh, between Arabs and Israelis, between Israel and Hezbollah. Uh, and it goes back decades, and it never stops. So can you explain that for us? Of course, we, we understand that Biden is showing unconditional support for Netanyahu. but. You know, on the sidelines, they're also trying to contain this war. What is the U.S. most afraid of? Is it a case of this, this war becoming regional and it being directly involved? And if that's the case, why has there not been, at the very least, a bipartisan support for a ceasefire? Well, unfortunately, the bipartisan support, congressional leaders are egging on Biden, who uh, has taken on a very aggressive tone. And I'm afraid it's uh, mainly political. This is an election year, and they're outdoing each other in their support for uh, Israel. If the administration seriously wants to de-escalate and prevent a wider uh, regional conflict, they should not be sending in uh, two aircraft carriers, two big battle groups. This only means you're preparing uh, for war. The Israelis should not be bombing all the way down to southern uh, Gaza. And the irony of it all is that the huge diplomacy is being uh, used to move in a few truckloads of uh, food and perhaps some medicine mm. uh, at, at a time when you're allowing, even egging on, the bombardment of Gaza. So you're trying to make a few, help a few people survive only to be killed by uh, bombs falling over their heads uh, mm. or, at best, displacement, uh, living into uh, uh, new tents and new refugee areas. Right. Um, this is an irony. This, this clearly doesn't show uh, a purposeful uh, diplomacy. And uh, it can only get worse if the Israelis actually go in full force on the ground into Gaza. So, because which, which country do you think would be best to mediate? Then, is Turkey has relations with Hamas? It, you know, it does make it one of the few countries with any influence with the group that has ruled Gaza since 2007. Do you think that Turkey is uniquely positioned here to mediate between Palestinians and Israel? I don't think so. I think uh, Qatar is the best uh, country in the region. They uh, host one of the top leaders of Hamas uh, in Doha. They have consistently sent, uh, after the last conflagration in Gaza, they helped rebuild uh, the destruction there. And they continue to funnel aid to the Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. And they are known as excellent mediators. So if Biden is serious, I don't think Netanyahu is. Uh, he would uh, employ Qatar not just to save some hostages, but to actually try to work out a deal. You need a comprehensive peace plan. 
Otherwise, this uh, violence is going to continue. What's different about it this time is that Hamas has come into its own militarily. For the first time, they took the initiative and they broke out of their outdoor prison in Gaza and attacked first, and they attacked effectively, uh, scaring uh, half the population of, of Israel. They have also connected well with other non-state actors, such as Hezbollah and groups supported by Iran in Syria and Iraq. So if they all jump into the fray, this is going to be one huge mess that we haven't seen before. Mm. All right. I wish we had more time. Thank you very much, Nabil Khoury, former U.S. diplomat and non-resident senior fellow at the Arab Center. Sure thing.